Okay, so I just got back from an incredible opportunity behind the wheel of an electric car for my very first time. And let me tell you what an experience. So BYD invited me and a couple other creators to the headquarters here in the UK to drive a couple of the cars. So the start of the show, my first EV ever. The SEAL all-wheel drive performance. So 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds, 112 mile per hour top speed, 494 pounds feet of torque and an estimator in quotes there, 325 mile range. Now, I knew that yes, electric cars are fast, they go instant torque and they're silent, completely silent. By still knowing all this and being in control behind the wheel of an electric car, I was kind of expecting that unexpected. And it was honestly a real shock to the system. And leaving the raw power and performance to one side, the whole driving experience from the steering and how I was confident, like taking corners at full speed, the body control, how stiff the whole car build, no, no bouncing around, no nothing. And how quiet an electric car actually is. It's like, I know they are quiet, but from the inside, from my first ever tire inside an electric car, it's super silent. I have been driving petrol cars for half of my life now. And I always say that I drive with the sound and it's really strange to drive no sound. like. A good strange, but strange. And a quick side note here, because I was driving on sport mode for like 90% of the time. I did sweep to eco mode just to see what it's all about. Um, regen or regenerative energy gets super aggressive. And you can actually do one pedal driving. That's something super strange to do, but you can get used to it. It will not give you that slingshot of acceleration. It's more like, step up transition slowly the steering wheel get loose and the suspension will get actually more softer so possibly in eco mode is how you probably can get close to that 325 mile range but nevertheless i was sport mode all in raw acceleration the ride got actually learned to the ground the suspension got rock solid and it was well instant power from 60 to 70 miles, overtaking Loris in the motorway and other cars, it was just seconds. And I need to talk about design because I have seen many brands coming out with EVs and they're all trying to look very 2050 futuristic looking machines. And if you didn't know this car that was driving the SEAL was an electric car while you're walking next to it, it's because it doesn't look like an electric car at all. Granted, you, you get a little bit closer and you will realize there's no front grill whatsoever. You've got a tiny grill at the bottom for keep the batteries or refrigerator. Door handles are flush with the bodywork and it does have some aero caps on the 19 inch wheels. And that massive, huge tail gate lighting from very 2020 and a massive um super clean sporting looking rear diffuser with of course no exhaust whatsoever so without stepping inside the car i was already shocked but that inside that interior is where the seal really blew me away starting like in the middle you got a 15.6 inch rotatable touchscreen that it dominated the whole center console and it's the most eye-catching thing whatsoever. One thing that I really enjoy coming from petrol cars and seeing how all electric cars are, well, taking all the buttons out is, well, this car does have real buttons everywhere. So everything is just a real button, a real knob. So we've got knobs over here to select the cruise control, the lane assist, the horn is a real horn. There's no button whatsoever. It's in the center of the steering wheel. And then you go other type of buttons over here for your volume, your media control, and all the other stuff. And also you've got stops up here. So you've got your indicators, your lights, your wipers, all that type of settings are all here and nothing is fully done through the screen. So it's nice just to have your hands here 
and feel like you got fully control of the car in general. And then you can say, hey, BYD. If you don't want to use any of the controls, you can just go, hey, BYD, turn the heating to X or roll the windows down or put the wipers on. It can do anything like that. And leaving all that to the side, all this futuristic stuff, it feels super premium at the same time, like super luxury with top-notch materials, an incredible seat design. Everything looks super incredible. You've got a full panoramic glass on the roof, customizable RGB lights everywhere. And I was driving it for around two hours, maybe in total, morning and evening. And I wish I was being driven because the back, that massive leg room, even with my driving seat position, you could easily fit three full adults at the back, thanks to, well, no transmission tunnel. The floor is super flat and the seat's actually in these rails. So it's a big space underneath the seat. Um, if you're looking for more space, you've got a 400 litre boot where you can put, well, your shopping suitcases or some bags and everything. So it's not the biggest storage compartment in the world, but it's good enough. So let me go back to the screen. It's bright, it's clear, have an incredible minimal input light, something that many people moan about online. But BYD is, is running the own infotainment software and it's just an outstanding multimedia system centerpiece the screen there. But then you realize it rotates between portrait and landscape mode. So my mind just was blow away, like the problem was solved. You can do it from the steering wheel while driving, or you can actually put it as an actual icon in the screen. And actually, I prefer using the navigation system in portrait mode, so you can see a little bit more of the road, but pretty much everything from the radio, the cameras, and all the other stuff that we're talking about, settings and everything, works much better in landscape. Even smart foot mirror or CarPlay. And let me talk about CarPlay for one second. It's using an older version, let's say, it's using the cable version of Apple CarPlay. So you need to connect it by USB that it's okay if the USB were in a normal place. They are underneath the middle, underneath the middle armrest, USB Type-C and USB Type-A, and was not really easy to found. But once you, you got them, okay, everything it works, everything was perfectly fine, but it was a little bit awkward the placement of the USBs to be honest and then you have the chimes all the sounds because you had chimes for days so I'm going to mention sound very quickly but you have forward collision emergency braking rear collision warning uh, crossing warning alert you got school zone alert lane, lane keep warning emergency lane keep and you also have blind spot detection, ASP, traction control, high descent control, and a bunch more. That EU is making many fun of factors have all this on by default. Perfectly fine, I'm all in for safety. So you will need to mute them. And to do that, you need to put your foot in the brake, start the car, still in park, go to the screen, go to settings, and found each from traction control to like all the other sounds and everything and start toggling all off. Perfectly fine. Now, if you start driving and you put your car in drive and you start driving and you, let's say you forgot about it, everything start chiming at you. Bling, bling here, bling, bling there. And to take it off, you cannot ask your passenger or you cannot even do it yourself in a traffic light or pull over and quickly do it yourself. You need to fully stop, put the car in park, go to the settings and start touching all the buttons and then put it back on drive and then carry on. So. I understand why they're there. I just wish it was a, a little different setting to take all this. But beside this little, um, honestly, very personal detail, it's super safety. And speaking of safety, I want to talk about CTB or cell to body technology. So under the sleek body, the seal packs a advanced blade battery that is fully developed by BYD themselves. And the lithium iron design is a structural part of that actual chassis as well. So they did show us a video, crash test videos, 
side to side, um, front and back, everything very aggressive. But the whole point was they can remove the top part of the chassis, put a new one, and the car will actually still drive. Um, BYD also show us um, this video of putting these batteries through some extreme like tests. Like uh, the name was nail penetration evaluation test. And a normal battery for another EV manufacturers over there. If you do this test, the battery will completely explode, go to 100 degrees, and just everything burns into flames. Now, BYD, these type of blade batteries, they are just doing a quick puff, only getting to like, I don't know, 20 degrees, 30 degrees dimension, and then everything just cools down and the battery is not a real problem whatsoever after that. So honestly, for safety reasons, this got me hooked completely. And the battery is claiming you the 325 mile. That is honestly impressive. But in the real world, I'm talking to the guys down there, they actually got this car. Depending on your driving style, on how you manage everything, they were getting about 250 to 60 miles between charges that it's okay for many journeys. And charging speed, they were topping up 150 kilowatts, giving you an estimated 40 minutes, depending on the temperature, but 40 minutes for a full 300 miles with a CCS port, which, well, it's not class leading, but still get you a decent top up when you actually need it. So overall, I'm rounding it up, my first experience driving an electric car like the BYD SEAL all-wheel drive has been simple on point. From performance to handling to how smooth the powertrain, everything is just blow me away and, and honestly I just I was in love since the minute that I signed that seat I pressed start foot in the brake foot in the accelerator just launch control the only way that I can explain that feeling is an aeroplane it's been on an aeroplane in the runway with the difference that in a runway on an aeroplane you know it's coming you you can hear you can hear the engine revving up and everything here is no engine here's like turning a switch for a light bulb, everything just happens instantly. And you get stuck to the seat, like roller coaster. And I've done it like four or five times in a row. Honestly, my chest just felt like I was in a real roller coaster. So is it perfect? No. There are a few small mistakes and miscellaneous and issues that probably is nitpicking, to be honest. But CarPlay scenario, okay. Then you got the... DAV radio was not perfect, sometimes went quiet for a reason, and the maps needed to update in terms of traffic, was not actually getting very good traffic data. But all this can be fixed over the A update, so not a problem. But for a new comer, first EV experience, starting at £40,000, the seal did make a hell of an impression on me. And of course, there's still so much for me to learn about electric cars from infrastructure, the ownership costs, the pros and the cons of having an electric car and running an electric car as you daily. But that's honestly a journey for a completely different day. For now, I just wanted to focus on my first experience behind an EV for the very, very first time with a BYD seal. So let's see if we can get some more EVs into the channel. I just remember, I'm Checo Tech, and I will see you on the next one. Adios.